Hello there and a very warm welcome to this video on creating a Japanese garden. My name is Russ and my website is www.turnyourgardenjapanese.com Very easy to remember, check it out when you get a moment. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. I should be posting plenty more videos helping you create your dream Japanese garden, a haven of beauty, a stress-free environment, and this particular video has lots of pictorial examples of a project that was done by Anna Barker of Lush Garden Designs. One day, Anna got a phone call out of the blue from people saying, our garden isn't great, we've got a few ideas, can you come round? She had no idea they were thinking of a Japanese style garden. You'll see the photos, you'll hear the tips and the help that Anna, who's a superb professional, can give you. So please enjoy the video, and in particular, the interview and the pictures. Thank you for watching. Anna, I've got to say thank you very much for sparing the time to speak to me and um, the members of the Japanese Garden Club and my websites. Um, That's right. a pleasure. What, what we're going to do is, uh, as we're talking, uh, I'm making this into a video, and I'm going to put the pictures before and after, okay. and, then we'll, and then I'll show a lot more of the pictures. The garden before you, I presume you just had a phone call from the client saying, we've got this garden space and we quite like sort of oriental Japanese gardens. What can you do? That that's right. In fact, at the first phone call, they didn't mention that they had a, a, a preference for a Japanese style. I just got a call saying, we hate the garden, can you come and help? Um, and so I arrived on the allotted day. I think it was pouring with rain that day, so it looked even worse. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and when I arrived, um, the couple were lovely. They'd, they explained that they'd travelled all over the world um, you know, and just loved the Japanese style. Uh, had been there a couple of times and really were inspired and they wanted to know if it would be possible at all to do something similar in their garden here in the UK. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a fairly, before <laughs> you got to work on it, uh, typical English yeah. back garden. Uh, That's right, yeah. You took the pictures, I think, on a, probably a dull, damp, misty day yeah. and there was debris everywhere from watering cans to leaves That's and right. what have you. Yeah. And it is a, this is the whole point of the Japanese Garden Club is to inspire people and, mm. and give them ideas on how they can make the smallest to the largest area they've got available into a Japanese garden space and all, all the benefits that, that come from that. So right. you, you paid the visit. We've yep. seen the before pictures. <laughs> How on earth did you go about designing it? Could you just take us through the thought process, if you can remember? Well, um, this garden had a, a bit of an issue with the levels. On the before picture I've sent you, you can see um, that from that lowest level with the block paving to mm. the bottom of the fence, um, it, the land rises up by about 1.4 metres, which is about 4 foot 6 or something. Um, and so they hated the fact that they couldn't really use the garden very well if it was slippery in the winter and so on. So that was the main part of the problem was trying to work out a way to make it more usable and, and level. So that was part of the job originally. Yeah. Um, but really, um, I guess I'm kind of lucky that I can I kind of walk into a space and kind of get a feeling for how it could look yeah. straight away almost, really. And then it's a question of trying to get that down on paper so the client can understand what well, I can see. Were you at all intimidated as it was your first Japanese-style garden? No, I was excited. So <laughs> how did you research it? Well, what I did was, um, obviously the internet is a great tool. Uh, I've got quite a lot of gardening books, um, you know, that I refer to and just for some ideas sometimes. But also, it's funny, um, my son was watching NHK, the Japanese news channel, and he said, look, there's a, there's a program on here about Japanese gardens, and there was a designer. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> it was just pure chance. Uh, his name is Shumio Masuno. Oh, yes. Um, and he was doing a fantastic garden uh, in the city somewhere. He's a monk, I believe. Uh, and so we sat and watched it, and a lot of the ideas in there were really, um, you know, really great for, for helping me understand the, the theory behind yeah. it, because obviously I'm not an expert. It was, it was a, a Japanese style I was going for, really, exactly. not, not a sort of a... And that's a really, you know, a important, that's a really important point, I think, yeah. you make there, Anna, that people, if they want to build a traditional Japanese garden, they're going to have to spend a lot of time. <laughs> There's an awful lot of theory, as you yeah. say. You've got to have exactly the right elements. Mm. You've got to hope that you've got the right sort of climate, that you can grow the right sort of plants, low plants, shrubs, 
shrubs, trees, etc., etc. Et have you got the right climate for moss? Chances are, if you live in a sort of arid area of the United States, North America, no. South Africa, <laughs> you won't. Um, so that's the absolute point here, that what we've yeah. come up with, and it's I think it's a brilliant design, and I, 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 I'm not trying to overflatter you. I think if <laughs> anyone listening to this and looking at the before and after and the selection of photos that I've decided to include alongside our chat, it is a magnificent effort. In fact, I think it's one of the best domestic Japanese gardens that I've ever seen, and I'm oh, proud that it's here in the so UK. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, there's hosta in there, there's ferns in there, there's Ata palmatum, there's, there's pines, uh, yeah. low level pines. These are very typical plantings for Japanese gardens so you, you have right. stayed true to it haven't you yeah that's right and I do love plants I really um they really make a garden because obviously without any of those things it could have been it could look very um, much like a sort of a hard landscaping exhibition you know what I mean mm. um and actually the client was very keen to keep um quite a lot of gravel on display and I kind of pushed for a bit more green um so yeah I was keen to add in a lot of plants things like the carex um as you say the pinus mugo um, Pittosporum tabira is a really great one for Japanese gardens. We have to keep a check on that one because it could get a bit large if we let it. So. Yes. <laughs> um, Japanese irises, all sorts of things. Um, and as you see, we're in the after picture where we've dropped the whole level down. There's a sort of um, an edge at the top, um, which just below the original land level, really, um, which has got a few more, um, maybe more traditional English plants, um, you know, to sort of form a bit of a green backdrop there as well. Yeah, and that looks really effective, I think. Yeah. And if, you, if people, you know, when they're designing a Japanese garden at home, don't be afraid, I would say, to use indigenous plants oh, uh, yeah. a, a, around your garden. And as you say, at the back, it gives it a lovely bit of screening. You've got a fantastic... Uh, wooden area and and the bench behind it. We'll come on to yeah. that in a minute. Okay. You've got a stupa in there. Which how much did that cost? Uh, the um, do you mean the moon gate? No, no, no. The the tall lantern. It's we, oh, we call see. them stupas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Not the well, short actually, one. That's a snow lantern, isn't it? But yes, actually, the client was in charge of getting the um, accessories. Shall we call it? Okay. They found a really great supplier um, in Kent, I believe, and and they went down for the weekend and came back. You know full of excitement of what they bought and showed me all the bits and pieces so I don't actually know how much okay. that one costs. <laughs> well my guess is that would have been around £350 maybe £400 so about yeah. 600 US dollars uh, the snow lantern is great and it's got that lovely sort of curved slightly curved roof which catches the snow in the winter oh, yeah. and the deer scarer is in there as well because no Japanese garden is complete is it that's without right. a water it's feature water. of some sort yeah, yeah. That's right. and the gravel of course technically depicts dry water that's right um, and then I, what I try to do with the um, there's two areas of sort of raised sort of land mass either side of the uh, the tall pagoda, um, mm. which I planted exclusively with liriope um, to sort of represent the sort of landforms within the gravel water. So that was what that was all about. What you get is a sense when you look at the gravel area with you know the stepping stones. What were they made of, by the way? They're all granite. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the and the gravel itself it looks like granite chippings. What size did you use? They were about 20 mil, I think. Oh, um, right. So they're, they're not going to rake it then? No, they've no. actually got two quite small, excitable dogs, so we kind of thought that's probably not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> Absolutely great. And, um, and what you get is that miniature landscape effect. That's and right. then, of course, the steps go up beautifully. Yeah. And uh, on top of the wall that was there before, were those roof tiles that seemed to be on top of the wall, were they there originally? I think they no. were, weren't they? Or no, you changed no, them, did you? We changed those. Yeah. Um, that looks really good. Yeah, we did. I'm an R about what we should do on the top there. Um, quite a lot of the local gardens have got, um, you know, a different sort of style of stone topping to the wall. But we chose a, a more modern look, especially with the um, the hardwood decking. I think it kind of adds a bit of a more modern edge to uh, some of the elements as well. So we chose the, the smooth slate to go on the tops of the walls. Uh, tell me about the moon window. How spectacular yeah. is that, by the way? Well, it's ironically, it's a bit of a Chinese feature, isn't it, really? Yes, it, it, technically, <laughs> although a friend of mine, Steve, who lives quite close to me, and I've uh, put some pictures on the Japanese Garden Club website, has a moon window that is ba essentially a circle of bricks with a hole, yeah. and you peek through, and it's a, I think it's a great feature in a Japanese well, that, that garden. Was, that was really what it was. This garden is all about the views, really. Um, you know, the view across through the moon gate and back the other way, yeah. um, you know, and I really just thought we need something quite bold, even though it's not a huge garden. It's only um, 13 and a half metres by 11 and a half, which is about 44 feet by 38, something like that. 
Um, it's not huge, but I felt you have to be a bit bold sometimes. And with such a strong design, you know, you don't want to be kind of left behind and thinking, oh, it's missing something. So um, I saw the a moon gate very similar to this in a garden in London, and I just mm. thought that looks fantastic. That's going to really help to bring it all together. So I got my joiners to um, replicate it for me. So from a planning point of view, Anna, uh, yeah. You can work remotely, and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be putting a link up to your website so Thank people you. can see some of the great work you've done, uh, including this garden. And if they're interested, they can contact you. Um, okay. You obviously use software to design a garden. Me, yeah. I'm much more basic than I use sort of like two inches to a foot, and I like <laughs> to draw mine out, and then I send them off to somebody to draw them up for me, and I've got plans on the Japanese Garden Club website. Yeah. What is the best <laughs> way? I mean, I always say to people, look, you're not Leonardo da Vinci probably. <laughs> Don't be afraid to sit down, because I think it's really feel, important and, and just put your your elements and the areas down on paper, you know, do it in pencil, and you, and you can rub, it, you can rub, yeah. rub them out if it doesn't That's look right. right you know? I, I still start with a, a piece of paper, paper and a, a pencil and do a lot of scribbling um, and then eventually you know something comes together and you you it up on the computer but you don't need to do that you can start on a, a as you say with pencil and paper um, and just yeah think of it also about um, think about the views not it's very difficult to some people find it very difficult to visualize uh, something in sort of 3d um, so try and imagine yourself looking through a picture frame at an area of the garden and what you yeah. would like to see you know, in that area, that really helps you to um, imagine it like a photograph already. Imagine it finished. Mm. And a what landscape like photograph, mm. exactly. That's right. A borrowed scenery, as it's called yeah, in Japanese exactly. gardening. What, what's your favourite elements of a Japanese garden? Now, you've, I know you're working currently on another Oriental type garden. Yeah. What, what, what's your favourite elements in, in the garden we're talking about now? What do you think works particularly well? Well, I love I love the views, as I say, through the moon gate and back the other way towards the moon gate from the opposite side of the garden. Um, I love the water feature. I think that's really, um, really important to have water in a Japanese garden or a Japanese style garden. Um, and actually, I, I really quite like the rocks that you know. Mm. Some of the rocks were in the garden already and in the original walls, um, and then we added to those. Um, and there where, some... where did you get the rocks from? An aggregate specialist? That's right, just a local guy yeah. actually, because there's quite a lot of um, aggregate work around this area in Leicestershire. Um, and so that was, you know, it was just easy to find something that was very similar. Um, but also there were a few, um, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, nice boulders, that's G-N-E-I-S-S, that came from yes, the Japanese it's fine. specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation. Um, but they work really well. They've got a lovely sort of glittery sheen to them as well. Which, you know. Yeah, you've got um, one or two of the bits of stone. You've got some lovely, almost like carved, natural carvings on them, which uh, I thought were really nice, the sort of the smoother ones. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Your advice then to people listening now, members of the club and, mm -hmm. and people who come to my websites uh, wanting to know more about how they can have their own Japanese garden, now that you've designed it and you've built it, your advice in simple terms, okay. how to, uh, sort of the beginning, middle and, and end and how you get to the end. Okay. Um, keep it simple. Think about, write yourself a list of the elements you'd like to include, really. So, for example, water or gravel or whatever it might be. Um, but have some strong elements as well. Um, so you've got space and you've got some interest. Um, so um, work on, on how you're going to view the garden from which windows, for example. Mm. You know, um, if you're going to be standing at the kitchen window for a long time, you make sure you've got a really good view from there. Um, and then really, I suppose, um, if you can't do it yourself, um, then get some help for things like the joinery and so on. Um, but most of things can be done fairly easily, really. I mean, mm. there's a lot of soil moving in this particular case because yes. of the level. Um, you may not need to do that anyway. Um, and so the gravel is really, you know, relatively easy to put in. It just takes a bit of hard graft, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's quite easy to do. Um, and then make sure you have to make time to enjoy it afterwards. Well, too. exactly. <laughs> and the great thing about most Japanese style gardens is that they don't need an awful lot of maintenance if you no, you know keep right. on top of it once a week I mean clearly with your maples and aces you're going to have to prune them yeah, unless you're buying dwarf trees <laughs> this couple claim to be uh, not 
not gardeners at all, <laughs> actually, but um, I, I know that they've been out uh, enjoying it an awful lot, so I know they will have been keeping it nice and neat and tidy. <laughs> and the relaxation side of a Japanese yeah. garden is one of the great benefits. It's That's a place right. to go and let the troubles of the world, hopefully, you know, the listeners yeah. um, uh, don't have too many, but you can wash them away. And also the positioning of a garden is important. Don't put it by a road where there's noise, you know, find a quiet little spot. Yes. Yeah. That's right, it doesn't have to be the whole garden, it could be a, a corner of your garden, which is a, a Japanese-style area, um, and that, that would be nice, so somewhere you can contemplate some, you know, uh, some peace and quiet, and that, having a, a nice view to look on helps with that feeling of relaxing, doesn't it? Mm. Finally, plants and shrubs to use in a mm. small space Japanese garden, what would you recommend? Okay, um, obviously the aces are brilliant, and there are so many different types. Yeah. Um, the low-growing things like the liriope, uh, they're good for ground cover, so um, any areas you need to sort of, you know, keep the weeds down a bit, well, they'll, they'll help with that too. Um, if you've got climbing plants, uh, or an area for a climbing plant, a bit like the moon gate or some kind of structure, then uh, wisteria is actually a great one. And uh, there's another one called Akebia quintata, uh, which is a really lovely uh, climber as a sort of um, uh, a chocolate-scented flower, which is always a bonus. Uh, things like box balls, actually, a little bit of structural shape so that some of the things which, for example, the hostas won't be there all year round, no. you still have some structure. What about hebe, globes and stuff like that? Yes, that's right. Anything small leaves that could be clipped and kept neat and tidy. Um, what else did Boxes I use? Boxes as well. Yes, that's right. Then, um, but you've got, to, you've, got, you've got to get your, your scissors out to shape those, your pruners, yes, haven't you? Yeah. That's right, yes. <laughs> But that's, again, that's quite one of those sort of reflective, contemplative jobs you have Absolutely. to do around the garden, which is quite nice. And hostas and ferns, obviously, and things like primula japonica and irises. They're yeah. a good choice for a bit of colour. Well, listen, I've got to tell you, Anna, it, it really is a beautiful garden. I'm sure that the people watching and, and listening to this now totally agree. A ballpark figure, Gosh. how much well, for that garden, ki kind of garden? Yeah, this garden was a little bit tricky because of the amount of soil movement that had to go on, and there was very little access, actually. So it all had to be taken out by hand in wheelbarrows ah. rather than, you know, sort of jump straight into a skip. Um, so there was a bit of an element of, of that, you know, um, and that's something to consider if you're having work done. Um, I would say this garden particularly probably cost at least £15,000 um, purely because of the labour uh, involved. Uh, and obviously there was an awful lot of wall building and so on <clears throat> to try and bring that level yeah. down. It's beautiful. But I think it's I love worth it. it. And I know the clients are really chuffed, so that's great. But so they should be as well. <laughs> um, Anna's website is lushgardendesign.co.uk <clears throat> and you can email Anna via the website. And I suppose people could, could send you some pictures and you could do a design for them remotely if, if they that's wanted right. to, do, wherever yeah. they are in the world. That's right. I've done um, gardens quite a long way from, from my base. Um, I, what I need is very good survey information, so either that means um, having someone come and do a survey or I can explain how to do that uh, over the phone to you. Yep. And then lots of photographs so that um, you know, I've got a really good idea of what's, not only what's in the garden but what surrounds the property and, the, and the, you know, beyond the garden as well. So... Yeah, but it's perfectly possible, so give me a call. <laughs> hey, how about that? You can telephone Anna, you can email Anna and uh, strike a deal for a garden <laughs> design. Uh, Anna, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, don't forget Anna's website, lushgardendesign.co.uk. You will find within the Japanese Garden Club a lot of information about Anna and her background. And uh, maybe when you've finished your next Oriental Garden, which you're working on at the moment, Anna, we can have a look at the pictures of that as well. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much for your time, Russ. It's a pleasure. There you go. That's uh, Anna Barker talking to the Japanese Garden Club. Hope you enjoyed it.